I want to share the Word of God with you. I won't be long, uh, but I need you to look at Matthew chapter number 13. The Lord instructed me to teach on the kingdom of God because we're not church members, we're kingdom citizens. And, and, and I need us to understand that, that Jesus, his, his whole ministry uh, was built around him teaching and restoring the kingdom of God uh, back to earth. And as a matter of fact, he said in Matthew 4 and 17, when he began his ministry, he says, repent, change your mind. Everybody say, change your mind. Change your mind. Say, then, then I will change how I live. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, is here and now. And the kingdom means when you live up under the rulership of God. You live up under the rulership of, of God. And so we're learning how to live in the kingdom. And Jesus taught people the kingdom by telling them stories called parables. And as I've been telling you, the truth of God is was he, it was hidden in these stories. It was concealed, and it was only made available to those who wanted to hear. That's why he says, he that has ears, let him hear. Because some people have ears, but they don't want to hear. Uh, some people have eyes, but they don't want to see. And so Jesus, he, he talked about that these parables would be made known to those who have a desire, a hunger, a thirst, an interest to really know spiritual things. But if you don't want to know spiritual things, then it will be hidden from you. So Matthew 13 and verse 44, he says again, verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like, he's telling us about the kingdom, it's like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy, everybody say for joy, Thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Then again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant, a man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, everybody say priceless, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought it. Please take your seats. So you got two individuals in this parable. It's really two parables. It's one man who finds a treasure in the field and another man who is in the pearl industry and he goes seeking pearls and he finds one particular pearl that is so valuable, so priceless, that he gives up all of his jewels, all of his treasure for that one particular pearl. You got it? I was talking to a young man this week who so blessed me because I love to be around real people. Time out for fake people. And, and amen, give God praise. And as she was ministering, as, as, as Minister Lord was ministering, she, she was transparent about some of the things that she's been through in life and how God has kept her. And the young man said to me, he said, I'm a new convert. He says, I recently been saved. And he says, I know how to make money in the world. He says, I was out there doing some things that were illegal. And he says, I got saved and I let all of that go. He says, but because of this economy being so slow and he says, I've been struggling. I'm on a, a, a real job now. And he says, I'm not bringing in the money like I used to when I was in the world. He says, I thought the other day for a moment that I would go back. And he says, I, I, I really had to, 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 to think things over, Pastor. And I says, why didn't you go back? And he says, because when I was out there doing my thing and I was making all that money, he says, I was miserable. He says, I had money, but I had no joy. And he says, so, he says, so I need you to encourage me because he says, I, I, I need to stay faithful and remain faithful to God and trust that God is going to see me through this rough financial period. And I prayed with him, and I said, brother, you just stay faithful unto God. He says, because the joy that I know now in being a believer, being a Christian, he says, is nothing like anything else that I've ever experienced. And that word is for somebody else today. Maybe you've been thinking about going back to what you know and what you used to do. But now that you are in Christ, 
There is a joy, there is a life that you experience, whereas it is the will of God that you never go back, but you remain faithful. Give God praise. So the first point I want you to write down is trading. Everybody say trading. Because there are, real, there are really two parables here, right? The first parable is about the man who finds the treasure hidden in the field, but the second one is about the merchant who is seeking godly pearls. And the two parables are about making a good trade, a good trade. Life is about choices and the decisions we make every day. And so this, these two parables are about making a good trade. Everything we do in life is a trade. Would you agree? You trade time for money. When you go on your jobs and you work, you are trading them time for money. That's why you get paid by the hour, 40 hours a week, all right? 45 hours a week, 50 hours, 30 hours a week, because you're trading time for money. Understand this, right? You trade your time for what you care about, right? You trade your time, even here this morning, to come and to worship. Because you could have been at home in your bed. You could have been watching uh, Netflix or Hula. You could have been watching Showtime, but you traded all of that in because worship is more valuable. Amen? And there's no way that you can go all week with a God who takes care of you, a God who provides for you and protects you with all this stuff I hear now, COVID and money, monkeypox and all this kind of stuff, and then I'm just going to lay up in the bed or I'm just going to sit home and not worship God? No, I trade in things I could be doing for something greater that I desire to do and that is to give God worship because he's been good to us and nobody knows like you know how good God has been. Look at your neighbor and tell him he's sure enough been good to me. It's a trade and people make trades every day. Now watch this. Here's my question. Do you make trades? Yes. And the trades that you make every day, here's the question, do they bring you joy? When I began to study this text, it caught me, it convicted me about things that I have invested in, listen to me, in my life but that didn't even bring me joy, that I was miserable doing it. We look around and we talk about those were the good old days. When I was out kicking it and I was clubbing, I was getting high, I was getting drunk, I was, man, I was having a good time. You forget about the time you were throwing up. <laughs> you forget about the hangover, you forget about the headache, you forget about, <laughs> you forget about the time the police got behind you and you were so scared. And then you look at your life and say, what was I trading for that? You look at relationships and how people did not value you and how people treated you and how they talked to you and how they tried to manipulate you and how they tried to control you and you, you, you didn't want to lose the person and so you stayed in it, but the whole time were you really happy? Did you have any joy or, with, or were you with somebody sacrificing your life and still miserable, giving them all your time giving them all your attention, giving them all your love, and guess what? You wasn't even happy. When I was reading this, he says again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man had found it hidden, and for joy, you see that? For joy thereof he goeth and selleth, he gives up everything that he has, just to buy that field. Life changing. Are you trading for the kingdom of God is what Jesus was saying. Or are you just trading for yourself? Every day, your life decisions, are they for the kingdom? Yes, we quote Matthew 6 and 33 and we love it. Seek first the kingdom of God and his. And what happens? 
But how many times in your life do, during the week do you really trade the things of this world and your personal desires for the kingdom? How many times are you really putting the kingdom first and saying, God, what is your will? What is your rulership? What is righteous? What is right? And so I sacrificed things, as, as, as my sister was saying, some things I did wrong and knew it was wrong. <laughs> It wasn't that I didn't know right. I knew it was wrong the whole time, but I made sacrifices for the wrong thing. I made sacrifices for the wrong thing. And so this word causes me to really evaluate myself. Are you trading time? Are you trading money for things that are important, truly important? And when I say truly important, things that have spiritual and eternal significance behind it. The Bible says, what profit a man if he gains the whole world, but then what? So what happens if you get the baddest car? What happens if you get the baddest house? What happens if you get the baddest purse, the baddest shoes? I'm talking about some bad shoes. And the whole time you don't know Jesus. And you gain popularity and you gain prestige and all of this stuff in the world. And everybody think you have it going on. But at the end, you die and spend eternity in hell. Was it worth the trade? Was it worth the trade? Now America has to decide with a Brittany Griner in Russia. Such a sad situation for less than a gram of cannabis oil. If somebody gives you nine and a half years and then turn around and say, but you can have her if you make the right trade and let out some of our worst and hardened, most hardened, hearted Russian criminals, then we'll give her back. Trade, trade. All right? And so what are you willing to give up that you may have all of God? Or are you giving up God to have the things of this world? Two scriptures I want to bring to you, your focus. Genesis chapter number 25 and verse number 29. Listen to this. It makes you think. Genesis 25 and verse 29 says, And Jacob saw pottage. He cooked some pottage, some stew. You know what that is? Just some, some, all it was was some vegetable stew. You know you done had some goulash, <laughs> some cornbread, and you come on. Okra and tomatoes and corns. You know how to make goulash. It's really anything you can find in the refrigerator. And so he made some, some pottage, some stew, and about so he comes Esau, he comes in from the field, and he was, he was weak, he's hungry, he's exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Maybe it has some beans in it. And he said, there's some red pottage. I see some red beans or something in that soup. He says, for I'm faint, therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, I tell you what, let's make a trade. Sell me this day your birthright, your destiny. Give me your destiny for a pot of stew. <laughs> and Esau comes back and says, behold, I'm at the point to die. I'm, he said, I'm, the, the brother said, I'm starving to death. He says, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? When you don't value who you are, when you don't value what's on your life, when you don't value your own purpose, listen to me, when you don't value, value your own destiny, then guess what? You own the market for anyone. And you own the market for anything. What's your value? What can people get you for? What's your cost? <laughs> and Jacob says, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Esau, gave up. 
don't, it doesn't look like a good trade to me. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and a pottage of lentils, some vegetable soup, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Look what the Bible says. This is the most important part. And Esau did what? Despised his birthright. It wasn't that he just traded it. He despised it. So listen to me. God says, when you choose this world over me, it's not that you're just simply choosing the things of this world over me. He says, you actually despise me. God says, you despise me. And so when it comes down to you, it's not that you don't know me, you know about me. He says, but you're not willing to give up the things of this world. There's so many people can tell you backwards and forth. Jesus is the son of God. He died on one Friday, got up one Sunday. I know all of that stuff. Yeah, you can know it, but will you trade? Are you willing to let go of the things of this world? Or are the things of this world so valuable? Doing what you do, being involved in what you're involved in, being with who you're with, is it so valuable to you that you say, Jesus, you got a good deal over there, but I ain't giving up the things of this world. And so he says, when you do that, you actually despise me like Esau despised his own birthright. Hebrews even brings it out a little bit clearer. I want to go to the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12. I told you I won't keep you long. Are you getting this? Is it all right? Hebrews 12 and verse 16 says this, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, all right, who for one morsel of meat, so it had vegetables, but you know, when you make greens, you know you got to put some ham hock or turkey leg, turkey wing or something in there. So, he sold his whole birthright for a morsel of meat. For we know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Sometimes you make choices in life. Sometimes you make decisions in life. Sometimes you make trades in life that you cannot take back. You only get one life, and the question is, what are you willing to trade for it? Now, as a pastor, as a leader, I'm so tired of racism in this country, racism in this world, and I think that they're doing this young lady, this basketball player, so wrong. But you got to think about the trade. Was it a good trade, seven under seven, 0 0.7 grams? of cannabis oil to be in a foreign country and get nine and a half years. Is getting high that valuable? Yeah, they doing her wrong and she shouldn't be over there. And, 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 and they, I believe they're treating her wrong for a lot of different reasons, but we have got to start making better choices. We got to start making better decisions. As a pastor in this pulpit, I would love to be able to stand up here and tell you I didn't, I, I, I've always made the right choices. It's some stuff I'm paying for now because I made the wrong trade. It's some, stuff you are, it's some stuff you're going, listen, young people, it's some stuff, sin will take you further than you want to go. It will cost you more than you want to pay, and it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. I think I said one more time, sin will always, it, it, it'll take you further than you want to go. It, it'll cost you more than you want to pay, and it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. And so you got to make the decision, is this a good trade? Should, 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 I, should I be giving up my whole life just to be part of a game? Is, is, it, is it even worth this argument with somebody over a cell phone? 
to take out a gun and shoot them and, and take their life and me spend the rest of my life in prison. Was that a good trade for me to never be able to get out and have a family and, and, and never be able to live my life? And all, all the reason is because I traded my whole life just to play hard or just to show somebody that you ain't going you can't talk to me or you can't say something to me and I don't I don't react back but it, it, okay you bad we say you bad we, we give you credit for being bad but was that a good trade for you to spend the rest of your life or to be shot down on these streets we've got to make better it's a nice pair of shoes but now I can't pay my rent the rest of the month. So do I rather have some place to live or just simply look good? I put, I, I, I put on some Chuck Taylors. Some of y'all don't know what that is. I put on some Converse. I ain't got to have red bottoms. I put on, I put on some Pro Kids. See, y'all don't want me to preach to you. I come in here with some Adidas on, and you talk about me all day long. But at least I got some place to stay. At least I got some food to eat. Because I'm not going to spend my whole life trying to impress folk who will never be impressed by me. And so why am I spending all of my wealth trying to impress you? And you don't even like me. You ain't even speaking to me. And so I'm not that desperate trying to get your attention. I'd rather have the attention of God who wakes me up every morning, who stores me on my way, who hung on a cross for me. You didn't die for me. You didn't get up for me. You ain't coming back for me. So everything in my life has to be a trade for him. Listen. I think every day with decisions I made in my own life, Kevin, was it worth it? The pain you cause, the hurt you cause. And I have to come back and say, no. It was a stupid trade. The sister stood right here and said, I'm glad she said that I was saved. She said I was saved and, and, and had the Holy Ghost. See, we, we, we want to be fake like the only people who making mistakes are people out there in the world. And there's some folks sitting right up in here who sang Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. I mean, Sunday school, vacation Bible school. I mean, speaking in tongues. I got the Holy Ghost dancing. But after the service is over, making the wrong trades, wrong decision. And it ain't that you ain't got the word. You know the word. Can I just talk to you for one second? Have you ever just asked yourself, what was on my mind? What was I doing? What was I thinking about? Some of y'all want to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Some of you hooked up with some people. See, you never hook up with people when you're going through a low season. Because when God begins to elevate you, that's when you start looking at people funny and you wonder what you're even doing with them. Oh, I, I, but see, you made the decision when you was at a low moment thinking you was always going to be there. But the God you serve is a God who will lift you up. The God who you serve, ah, I feel like preaching to somebody. See, the God you serve will come back in and he's a restore. He'll give you back everything that the, the caterpillar and the canker worms and the locusts have eaten. And so you can't prepare just for today. You got to prepare for tomorrow. You can't pick a mate just based upon where you at. You got to pick a mate based upon where God is taking you. Because some folk are good for you here, but they won't work for you when God takes you over there. And so you got to learn how to walk by faith and not walk by sight. Value. Say value. I talked about trading. Can I talk about value for just a minute? Both change the priorities of their existence based on the discovery of ultimate value. 
How do you know when you find something really valuable? Because it will cause you to reprioritize your life. It'll cause you to leave some things. <laughs> because you're going for some better things. When the man, when the merchant, in verse 45, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant, a man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Which means he had other stuff, but he found something better. How are you in relationships with folk who want to be with you and the other jewelry? I'm a pearl. You don't get to have me and a, and a jar full of other stuff. Can I preach? It? You don't get to have me and you got a whole drawer full of this and that and you wear me on Monday, but you wear this on Tuesday and you wear this on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. No, baby, when you hook up with me because I'm valuable, I'm the only piece of jewelry in your box. Can I preach to somebody up in here? And we've got to get out of letting folk devalue us. But some people devalue us because we don't devalue ourselves. And when you treat you good, you force people to come up to the standard that you are accustomed to. But if you don't treat you good, then other folks think they can get away with treating you bad. <laughs> the man sold everything. Say he sold. Say he bought. I, if I had time, but see, we ain't got enough time. If I had enough time, I preach about folk who want to rent you but don't want to buy. It's, it's, we don't have time. It's a whole nother discussion. We won't even get into it today. But, but there's some folk who only want to rent. They don't want to buy. They think you are an Airbnb. They don't want to buy a house. They just want to stay every now and then. And you cannot hang with folk who only see you as a visitation but not a habitation. I'm not no side nothing. If you're not willing to sell everything, keep on moving. Because I know my value. I wish I could preach to somebody here. Don't tell me you're working on it. Tell me you've already got it worked out. If you ain't willing to sell everything, then you ain't ready for me. I wish I had somebody here. Don't think that I'm going to lower my value for your dysfunctional ways. I'm, I'm, can, excuse me. But I've been through so much in my life, I'm only dealing with folk who respect my value. Come on, give God praise. I, yeah, am, I, am I in the right place? I'm, I'm only dealing with folk who, I, I don't have time no more for people who don't even respect my time. People don't respect my gift. People don't respect my talent. I told you before, people never pay you what you're worth. They pay you what you negotiate. And you should negotiate based upon understanding your own worth. People are always looking for a deal. But if you want me, <laughs> I'm worth everything that you got. The stuff used to value and keep, that they used to keep, they got rid of because it was no longer important. Can I sneak something in here? I, I was reading a scripture the other day, Ephesians 4 and 30, 32 says that we ought to forgive one another, be kind to one another, kind-hearted, as God, for, watch this, as Christ, for God's sake, has forgiven us. 
As God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. He said we ought to forgive one another. And guess what he says? Once you experience the pearl of God's forgiveness, then you let go of the little grudges you've been holding in the draw. Because I found something more valuable. I, I, I can forgive you because the value that I've received in God forgiving me. So how can I hold on to this look fake goal of stuff that you did to me that's turning green every day anyway? When I done found real gold that God forgave me of everything I've ever done wrong. So the reason why I can forgive you because I let go of the other stuff because I found something greater and better in this place. I found a pearl, so I give up all the other stuff I got. Some of you can't, see, some of you can't give up what you, you've been holding for years because you don't understand the forgiveness of God. If you ever get a glimpse that Jesus hung on the cross with nails in his hand and spikes in his feet and said, it's finished. I done done everything needed for your whole slate to be washed, to, 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 to be washed and made whole and clean again. Once you understand that, how can you hold on to look stuff people have done to you? Sell all. Get rid of everything so you can enjoy the true pearl. And I want to close with this. Say hidden treasure. Can I encourage some of you why God sent you to this service today? Just because you're not on a platform, just because everybody doesn't know your name doesn't mean you're not a treasure. Just because you're not married yet, I'm going to talk about Wednesday in our Bible study time, that single and unmarried are two different things. See, some people, because you're not married, have devalued yourself. But you don't understand the difference what single really means. It means you whole. It means you complete. As a matter of fact, people can't be married until they're whole and complete. The best people in marriage are people who were single. Some folk messing up in marriage because they was never whole and complete when they were single. So you hooking up with liabilities and not assets. You was messed up. I'm sorry. There's some hidden treasure in here, but God has you hidden in the field right now. You're anointed to preach. You're anointed to sing. There's some folk in here. Don't compare yourself to other treasure. You got to do your time in the field. You got to do your time up under the dirt. You got to do your time when nobody knows your name. You got to do your time when nobody's recognizing you. You got to do your time when you don't have a title. You got to do your time when nobody, no, 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 nobody seems like they're paying you any attention because if you can make it through the dirt, see, it's going through the dirt that strengthens you. It's going through the dirt that perfects you. It's going through all the hell, the hard time, the trials, the ups and the downs. It's, if you make it through the dirt, then you're ready to shine. But people that ain't been through nothing, ain't ready to handle or receive anything that God is trying to give them. When I see people that God is greatly using, the first thing I think about, what, did they, what dirt they had to go through. Real anointing costs. And so the world does not value where the kingdom sees value. They just see a field. A lot of people looking at you right now, they see a field, but they don't know that there's a treasure in the field. They see dirt. Adam was made from the dirt. God breathed into him the breath of life. Man becomes a living soul. They do not see the treasure. God, but, oh God. You know what God just said to me? God says, I bought the whole field. Oh, we ready to go now. God says, when I looked down from heaven, I saw some dirt. But he said, but the reason why I sent my son 
Jesus through 42 generations is because I saw treasure in the dirt. I'll be back. Hey, y'all. God sent his son Jesus into the world that was dirty and messed up because he saw a treasure in the dirt. So if there's anybody that's been through some dirt, if there's anybody got a pass in here, God is not looking at your dirt. God sees treasure in the dirt, and Jesus went to Calvary and hung on the cross to pull the treasure out the dirt, and he gave his life to buy the whole field. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish So God found me at my worst, but I'm only valuable because of what he spent on me. Listen, you know what it costs to save you? It costs heaven's best. God looked down and saw the field, and God said, I see treasure, but it's going to cost me. Shall I send an angel? No, an angel won't do. I got prophets, no, they won't do. I got preachers, pastors, evangelists, I got apostles, I got teachers, I got all of that, but they won't do. What it's gonna cost me? It's gonna cost my own only begotten son. So God took all that he had to buy the field and he sent his son Jesus and say, son, you got to pay the price because Everybody else just sees a hunk of dirt, but I see some treasure in the field. And was saved because the Father was willing to buy the whole field just so he could get the treasure that was hidden and buried 